Let's talk about the overregulation of drones in the USA and the idea that bringing in remote ID is going to somehow <laughs> solve all the deaths that haven't happened yet. Yeah, yeah, there's been no deaths with uh, with drones and FPV drones are possibly one of the, other than cutting your finger now and again, one of the most safest greatest for mental therapy hobbies that anyone could ever do. I want to just take a quick look at this uh, FAA video that they brought out. One of the highlights that we wanted to showcase and explore and evaluate is that once an entity is able to access that remote ID information and that ID itself off of the aircraft, we wanted to provide an app or a way for authorized entities with elevated privileges based on policy decisions that are to be determined will be able to ascertain an additional set of information. Uh, just, to, just to highlight how uneducated the FAA are about this, the, the whole hobby. But it just confused me at the end of the video where they're talking about how the how technology's changing, we're sharing the aerospace, um, all these different things are coming. Current air traffic management paradigm as we know it today, it's gonna hinder innovation because the rules and the technologies and the processes and the procedures are really meant to support traditional air traffic operations. But in America, you can you can build an aeroplane in your back garden and fly it without even a license. I mean a real aeroplane, not a drone, a real aeroplane where a person can sit in it and fly it, an ultralight. You can build one in your back garden and fly it and you don't even need a license or anything. You just go and fly it in America, which I think is pretty cool, but also a reason why why would you want to regulate drones when you're not even regulating real aeroplanes? The U.S. and Canadian Border Patrol personnel get set to play their softball game at Pinty Field, southeast of the farmer's market. Traffic monitoring and FBI surveillance drones conduct operations over the park. So in this scenario, you need traffic drones and security over, over a public park. Maybe you should have SWAT teams on the ground as well. Uh, they could probably stop anything from happening. <laughs> a food delivery drone brings pizza to help the players carb load before the game, then promptly departs the area. Hold on a minute. So, so now we're living in a area or a time when a drone can carry a, a full-size pizza to feed a whole baseball team. You're telling me one drone can bring enough pizza to feed all them guys and girls? <laughs> I, th I think I think you would need a swarm of uh, of, uh, of drones to deliver pizza for that game, or maybe maybe here's the thing: just get some guy on a moped to bring it. A recreational user named Danny is in the park nearby and watches as the softball game gets underway. He launches his UAS to get a better view, flying repeatedly over the crowd. A local law enforcement official from... Before I go on to this bit, this is a video from the FAA who was supposed to know everything about drones and remote ID and how drones work and what drones are, and they're calling this a UAS. This is a FPV drone with a Session 5 on the top which they don't make them, they don't make them sessions anymore, by the way, or it could be a session four, but it's most likely a session five. Danny is using an out-of-date camera that on an FPV drone will be facing upwards, not able to look at any baseball game. So although they're saying that Danny's wanting to watch the baseball game with his FPV drone, they're 100% wrong because if you're going to watch the baseball game, you're going to want to use a camera drone, not an FPV drone. Danny's not going to be flying over people and he's not going to be watching the game with that drone, FAA. Just, just, I can promise you that. 
A hundred percent. hundred percent he's not going to be watching that game with that drone. hundred percent. From the Oneida County Sheriff's Department, notices Danny's UAS and notifies other law enforcement officers in Rome. So now we're at the point where Danny's flying FPV, probably under the trees, quietly getting on with his hobby. <laughs> because maybe, maybe Danny has some sort of... Uh, uh, issues you know with his life and he just wants to go out and enjoy flying his his little drone and you know like like we all do just forget about paying the bills and all the debts and the uh, and the interest rates and we just go out and we just fly our drones and just have some fun so the police take all the police from the area instead of policing the town they're now focused on this hobbyist toy drone pilot because that's what the USA want us want the police to start focusing on now and also at this point nobody's been up to Danny just to politely ask him if he's flying a drone that's 100 under 250 grams that wouldn't need remote ID or any sort of ID obviously he isn't but in this scenario Nobody's asked him that. A federal official from the FBI steps in to help retrieve the necessary information. The FBI official initiates a correlation query with the Federal Aviation Administration, which provides identifying information about the UAS and its operator. Seriously, this one toy drone has now attracted the FBI and the FAA, and he's using up man hours that USA people pay taxes to pay for they've taken their eye off watching the airspace and now they're focused on this toy drone in a public park near a baseball ground <laughs> you, you can't make well yeah they did they made this up yeah you can make this up <laughs> the FBI official uses this information to determine that Danny is a regular who commonly flies his drone at this park the official is also able to determine that Danny does not have a waiver to operate over people and contacts Danny directly. In part two, while the FBI official engages with Danny, a Canadian Border Patrol agent named George slides into third base and lands at a painful angle, fracturing his left arm. So basically they're saying they're going to have history logged on all your flights using the remote ID. So they're going to have a database of every time you fly. Imagine if they did that with your driver's license or your car, or every time you, you, if you stuck remote ID on your gun, and every time you went out to use your gun, they would have a, have a place where, you know, which range you went to or which forest you went hunting in. That's definitely over-regulation. That's like, that's almost into privacy law, that. So this next bit as well, it's crazy. You won't believe this next bit. You won't believe what and how and where they're going to keep these medical drones. Just watch this. The Oneida County Sheriff arrives on the scene and requests an emergency services drone to deliver a splint for George. Jane, an emergency services UAS operator, initiates a medical use UVR to alert other operators around Pinty Field of her mission. She dispatches her drone from Griffiths International Airport and into the BV Loss Rome Oriskany Corridor. So FAA, you're going to keep medical drones at international airports where drones shouldn't really be flying. If you check your own rules and you check standard rules and you check the rules that people with common sense fly by, we don't fly at airports. There's aeroplanes there with wings and people on board. And an international airport, you're going to have many people on board. Are they going to ground them aeroplanes to just send a splint? Would it not be best to keep any medical drones, if there is going to ever be such a thing, because would you not just send an ambulance from the local hospital? If there is going to be such a thing, send it from, let me think, hmm, a medical facility. Oh my God, yeah. What a brilliant idea. Or, or maybe a hospital. Not an international airport. ID is definitely something that the hobby and toy drones do not require. They've never required it. There's never been an issue with toy drones. 
and mostly 99.9% .9 of drone pilots use common sense and fly within their limits. There may be 0.0001% of the population who don't know anything about the rules or regulations and they're the ones that maybe the FAA are targeting but they're not going to be using remote ID are they? So this only affects law-abiding safe drone pilots, RC plane pilots, kids and people wanting to or have an interest in aviation. The interest in aviation from a child's point of view will will plummet I'm guessing once this once this comes in in September. Overregulation is a crime. If you want to know more about this just go to XJet's YouTube channel and he will he has most of the up-to-date information and a really good focus on the whole situation in the USA and what's coming to Australia. Till next time guys.